passwords have been around forever, but let's be honest, they're frustrating, insecure, and sometimes easy to forget. Enter passkeys, a new way to authenticate. In this episode, Tech Tribe, we discuss what passkeys are, how they work, and why they're a game changer for logging in and even approving payments. Joining me today is Nakia Shishkov, a payment expert working on making online payments safer and smoother for 3DS, Click2Pay, and FIDO authentication. Nakia, welcome. Hi, Ivana. Glad to be here. Thanks for inviting me. So, for a start, a very simple question. What are passkeys? <laughs> I often get this one. But before that, I have a better question for you. Can you tell me, for example, what the passwords are? So, um, as I mentioned, a password, it's that annoying thing you forget right when you need it most. <laughs> uh, but um, a mix of letters, numbers, and uh, a bit of frustration sometimes uh, used to log in or approve something, right? But what, what does this have to do with passkeys? <clears throat> Not much, uh, but let's go back to the passwords for one more minute. For them to work, there is a registration step involved, like we all know. The user first needs to create one. Think of a password compliant with all the complexity requirements and provide it to the application or to the server that asked for it. They need to securely store the password and associate it with the user for future usage. The user still needs to remember or write down the complex password. I'm not implying that one should do that. We all know how the usage works. One types the password together with the user identifier and the other party matches it against its internal record. Now, what could go wrong in this scenario? Passwords can be stolen by phishing, by getting the sticky note where it was written, or by breaking into the website server repository. Now, millions of passwords have been stolen due to this kind of attacks. They can also be forgotten, but ultimately, whenever there is a need of them, they are exchanged between the one who has the password and the one who needs the password to verify the identity. Yeah, um, I think, I mean, at least I hope that most of our audience knows how passwords work. But passkeys, on the other hand, right? Uh, yeah, the passkeys. So, you know, they allow secure passwordless authentication, introducing a lot of convenience, but most importantly, they solve the password problems I've mentioned previously. And now you would say, what is a passwordless authentication? So, passkeys are invented by the FIDO Alliance, which stands for Fast Identity Online. But they are also known as FIDO credentials. They are based on a public key cryptography. So, creating a passkey involves a creation of two cryptographically correlated keys a private and a public one. The public key is exchanged with the application or the server of the, or the website that is responsible for authentication, while the private key is securely stored on the user device, be it laptop, a smartphone, a PC, even a USB dongle. Whenever authentication is needed, the user uses this private key to create a signature or a proof of a possession. And instead of sending the private key to the website or to the server, it only sends the signature. And interesting, by using cryptography and the corresponding public key that was previously exchanged, the server can verify that the correct private key was used with the correct user and it can perform successfully the authentication. So if, if I understand correctly, you mentioned secure, passwordless, less authentication. Where does the security actually come in here? Good that you ask that. A few things. First, 
the public and the private key pair are created on the user side by using the FIDO protocol. Only the public key is exchanged with the server. The public key itself cannot be used for authentication. The private key or the pass key does not leave the device during the authentication process. It is only used to generate a proof. And most pass key providers store the pass key on a secure hardware storage on the device. But ultimately, using the pass key itself may also require a user verification, like with biometrics. So, you know, if an attacker breaks into the server's database, they can steal all the public keys of all the users, which technically brings zero value because they are public anyway. And stealing a pass key from a specific device belonging to a user requires first access to that device or to the provider where the pass key is stored and a, a very, very sophisticated hacking skills. It's incomparable with the security of the passwords. So you're telling me that even if hackers break into a server, they get what? Nothing? And I, I hear somewhere biometrics. So instead of getting a tons of passwords in case of passwords, the hackers in this case will live empty handed with the public keys that they cannot use for nothing more. Some of the passkey providers or more correctly said FIDO authenticators, the ones that are responsible for storing and using the passkeys require user verification just before unlocking the passkey and using it for authentication. But let's go with an example. So Windows Hello and the Mac Touch ID, which are available on PCs and Macs, iPhones Face ID or Android's fingerprint and biometrics. They're all FIDO certified authenticators. And when the pass keys are created and stored, but also when they are used for authentication, these authenticators would require the biometric authentication of the user. Without that, one cannot use the pass key for authentication. And this adds an extra layer of security. You also mentioned convenience, but I'm asking from a user perspective, me being the user, for example. What makes passkeys a better option? Because passwords, although frustrating sometimes, we can all agree, are simple. Just type them in and you're done. Why would someone switch to passkeys instead? Well, again, another example. Let's say that you're registering on a website. So beside the other stuff that usually use as a user are being asked during the registration process, instead of asking for a password, a passkey enabled website would rather ask for a creation of a passkey. How the passkey is created or what is the process here? So the web browser will take the request and carry it up to the passkey provider where the passkey will be created. The default, the platform provider, will ask for the user verification, which will be a form of a biometrics, like scanning the fingerprint. And that's it. The passkey will be created, stored, and associated with your account. Logging into the website, it's even simpler. Imagine you provide the username, the website asks the browser to perform FIDO authentication with passkeys. The browser says, okay, scan your fingerprint. You scan your fingerprint on your device or you show your face on your smartphone and you're logged in. That's it. Is that too complicated? <laughs> well, when you're telling it like this, it does not sound complicated. And where where the passkeys can be used and um, what would it take for users and for websites to support them? Well, in simple terms, wherever we use passwords, 
in today's world. So simply for logging in on a remote websites, we could use passkeys. To be able to create, store or use passkeys, the user will need to have a device with a FIDO compliant authenticator and of course a modern web browser. Most of today's consumer computing devices, which operate on Windows, Mac, Linux, Android, or iOS support passkeys. If a website or a server, which by the way in technical terms in this context is called a relying party, wants to support authentication with passkeys, needs to be backed up with a so-called FIDO server. This FIDO server initiates the creation of the passkey and is responsible for the passkey authentication. Or for our tech-savvy listeners, how does passkey authentication actually work behind the scenes? With passwords, you just send a string to the website and you're in. But what's happening under the hood with passkeys? Sure, of course. Um, the authentication process is usually initiated by the user. Let's say providing a user identification, for example, a username. The website, or if I made a relying party, checks if there is a passkey associated with the specific user. And if so, with the help of the previously mentioned FIDO server, generates a so-called challenge. This is a random sequence of bytes. The challenge is returned as a response back to the user, or more precisely, to the user agent, also known as the web browser. By using the WebAuthn protocol or WebAuthn API, the website's front-end can initiate the authentication by using the received challenge. The browser will pass this challenge to the registered authenticator. Remember, Windows Hello on your laptop or Touch ID on your Mac or your smartphone for signing. After the user verification by the operating system, and that means the user is verified by scanning the fingerprint, for example, the authenticator will unlock the passkey, the private part that was securely stored, and use it for cryptographically signing the challenge that was previously received. So now the challenge is signed cryptographically with the private key that is owned by the user. This signature, which is also a sequence of bytes, is sent back to the relying party, which is the website. Here again, with the help of the FIDO server, the signature will be verified against the corresponding public key. And if everything works well, the user is authenticated. Beyond logging in, are there any other ways that passkeys can be used? Uh, this, this is a really interesting question. Thank you. So there is a big potential in using the passkeys for authenticating and approving payments. When I say payments, I mean online payments. Just imagine you want to buy something online and in the payment flow, instead of receiving one-time passwords via SMS or email or app notifications, requesting for action, you need to look for your phone and approve the transaction, you just scan the fingerprint or maybe show your face to the camera and smile and it just works. So it's convenient but without stepping down on the security. Well, I have to say, when you say it like that, that would make me definitely make my shopping experience really better, right? Whatever I'm using, whatever I need to log in, whatever I need to sign up, whatever I need to push some button or whatever I need to do online that just takes too much time. Um, but how close is this to the reality? Can we implement it? Can we use it? Is it happening today? This is happening. So the major payment networks already pilot the usage of pass keys in their wallet solution. For example, click to pay. 
the 3D specification, which is the de facto standard for payment authentication, supports authentication with passkeys since years. Adoption is starting now. And in addition, W3C, the World Wide Web Consortium, is working on a new API, which is called Secure Payment Confirmation. With this new feature, the browsers would be capable of displaying a payment-specific prompt with the payment-relevant information while asking for passkey authentication. So this payment information will be included in the FIDO challenge, which will be ultimately signed by the passkey, meaning by the user. And this fulfills an important requirement, which is called dynamic linking, that is necessary in some regions. And as a technical vendor, of all the components involved in this online card payment, we, as GNDN, etc., were involved in early pilots where such payment authentication was available live for a few of our customer banks and merchants. The feedbacks were very positive, and we are looking forward for a wider adoption. Well, there you have it, folks. Thank you, Nakyo, for joining us today. Thanks, Ivana, for having me here. It was a pleasure. So we can conclude that passkeys are here to make online authentication safer, simpler, and password-free. With stronger security, seamless user experience, and, of course, growing adaptation, they're set to change the way we log in and pay online. Thanks for tuning in. I'm your host, Ivana Paskoska. Stay curious, stay secure, and we'll catch you in our next episode.